Hello, my name is Mingyu Park, uh, in charge of uh, Chief Science Officer in Virtual Lab and Materials Care. So today I'm going to say that is thermal conductivity calculation with the materials care. So uh, first of all, I'm really glad to be here and we are have so many uh, previous webinar is Honon or something like that. So uh, I really appreciate the uh, uh, join this meeting today. All right. So today I'm gonna be say uh, I'll start from the brief introduction of the molecular dynamics and let us some conductivity and some apl applications. After finish the introduction of uh, first part, and I will gonna be uh, proceed the uh, some kind of the tutorial sessions. Uh, today we are uh, going to tutorial as a uh, uh, calculate the lattice thermal conductivity of silicon uh, in materials care is lamps. Uh, we are going to use lamps. And after that, uh, analyze some calculation results. And after finish the tutorial session, I will be uh, get some question and answer uh, sessions. All right. Uh, I want to say, firstly, uh, we have some three previous webinar. First one is the introduction to the material scale. And second webinar is phono calculation. And on uh, left Last month we are have a, we are have some webinar about the calfad with the materials care. So today we are going to say the molecular dynamics uh, about the, uh, by using the materials care. So I want uh, for first I want to start from the molecular dynamics simulation theory. Uh, basically, a molecular dynamics called the numerically solved the Newton equation of motion in the atomic level or the molecular levels. Or this more most important thing is the time is uh, treated as the discontinuous uh, instead of continuous because the time integrates the uh, equation of motion numerical method. So time is not uh, treated as a uh, uh, continuous thing. So and another thing is the force calculations. Uh, force calculation in in a molecular dynamic simulation, uh, the system is regarded as the pairwise additive interactions. So uh, in the molecular dynamic simulation, uh, we have some, we, we should perform the n square times, but it is very uh, in, 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 in inefficient. So uh, many people are trying to reduce the calculation by using the cutoff ledgers or bolel list or some cell list scheme. So recently we are using this kind of thing. And if you are interested in this uh, bolel list or cell list, uh, please refer to uh, reference one or two. And for example, in Leonard Jones system, is force are uh, calculating uh, this uh, formulas. Our force is derivative of the total energy as a function of uh, each direction. So we can calculate the force in the uh, usual case. But uh, Leonard Jones systems can be calculated by uh, this formula. For example, uh, here, All right? So. Uh, in this case, is we are uh, in the Renaton system. Force is calculated by this formula. It's very simple and very fast. So many people are using the Renaton system of to force calculation, but it's very basic. So, and uh, another thing is the definition of temperatures. Uh, usually, in the classical mechanics, is classical mechanics. Uh, the average kinetic energy can be uh, transformed to the temperature by uh, this this. Uh, formula and the K is the Boltzmann constant, and so uh, the, we are for the equation, mo equation of motion, and then we can calculate the temperature of here. So uh, we assume that uh, the system has n and a number of n particles in the uh, system. So a degree of freedom of of of, heat of in system is n f is uh, three times n minus three. So temperature is can be defined by this. Uh, formula as a function of time. So this is the number of uh, particles in the system, and uh, we can we can solve the dissipation. We can get a, a temperature in the system, and also defi define the temperature in the molecular dynamics simulation. Uh, but you know the, the very important thing in the defi definition of uh, define the temperature in the molecular dynamics simulation. Uh, because uh, you can see the in here is the uh, n n is in here and here, so enough number of atoms uh, required and uh, pre prerequisites for in the system in order to the uh, 
define temperature very accurately. For example, uh, I want to show the two examples of the system. Uh, first system has uh, uh, 12,000 atoms in the system, and second system has uh, uh, 16,000 atoms in the system. But uh, you know, uh, in first figure, the uh, fluctuate the temperature is very uh, large, or uh, larger than uh, this uh, system. So we know that uh, uh, this is a very important thing to the number of atoms in the system is very important for the classical molecular dynamic simulations. Okay. So next thing is a bullet integration algorithm, which is using for the integration time, because I, I already told before the uh, time is regarded as uh, uh, this, uh, this continuous. So we need some uh, integration scheme in the molecular dynamics. But uh, most important uh, algorithm for the time integration is bullet integration algorithm. So this is the numerical method for the Newton equation of motions. And for example, uh, let us the uh, atom position X is, can be defined by the V time T. And next position and after next position can be defined by here. However, uh, it, it is very uh, a good way to calculate and integrate, integrate the time, but the, the problem is the time consuming. So uh, the position of the next put, uh, next time can be calculated by the current position and the past position and the acceleration. So this uh, equation can be transformed by this equation. So it is very, uh, sometimes it's very good scheme, but the problem is the, uh, you can see here, uh, all that algorithm uh, does not ex explicitly calculate the velocity of atoms in here. You only calculate the, like uh, using the position and acceleration. So in the bullet algorithm, uh, cannot calculate the uh, velocity of atoms directly. So uh, another method can be arise. This is the velocity bullet. <laughs> can be write uh, this kind of formula in here. So, but you don't worry about this kind of algorithm in the calculation because it is, it is already uh, in the, our uh, very commercial or some open license code in molecular dynamics code. So I don't want, I, I want to just say about uh, this algorithm is using our calculation. So uh, the usual case, initial position can be calculated by bullet algorithm and near force and velocity can be calculated by the velocity bullet algorithm. Okay, um, next thing is the uh, uh, ensemble. Uh, ensemble has uh, uh, many things. So it's like a micro canonical ensemble, or canonical, or grand canonical, or constant MPT ensemble, or the enthalpy, something like that. Uh, this kind of statical ensemble is, exists here. But today, I want to explain just uh, two things. is like MVE, like a micro canonical ensemble, and uh, MVT is this canonical ensemble. Very important is uh, most important example in the classical molecular dynamic simulations. So, but uh, you know about the assumption is here. So, all force are calculated in the classical molecular dynamics is related to the potential energy, and also total energy is system is converged like a kinetic plus uh, potential energies. This is assumption of the uh, canonical uh, ensembles. And uh, first ensemble is the MVE ensemble, which is the fixed uh, number of atoms n and num uh, volume in the unit cell is fixed. So we call the micro canonical uh, ensemble. Uh, this ensemble is very important thing is the uh, ensemble average quantity should be equal to time average quantity obtained from the molecular dynamic simulation. So this is gonna be uh, the same in the calculation. And Second is the MVT ensemble. In the M M uh, MVT ensemble is the fixed uh, number of atoms and temperature in the unit cell, uh, which is isothermal, and we call the canonical ensemble. This is the canonical ensemble in here. It's, a, it's like a, in the plus, so there are a number of atoms are isolated in the system, and uh, uh, in temperature is also is fixed in this system. The only difference from the, this uh, micro canonical and canonical ensemble is the is the only they are fixed energy and this is the fixed temperature. So in order to uh, uh, con consistent temperature, uh, the system energy uh, total energy of system should be changed. 
uh, in order to the, uh, maintain the temperature in here. So another thing is uh, there are some we should know about the thermostat. Thermostat is uh, like a, uh, how to uh, managing the temperature in the system uh, uh, with the uh, MVC ensemble. So there are so many uh, methods that exist, like a Gaussian, Anderson, Bernstein, and Node Fuber thermostat is existed. But nowadays, this Nova Node Fuber thermostat is mostly widely used in here, and also Bernstein's are used in lamps. So uh, as we have some curious about the what is the good thermostat. So velocity distribution should be satisfied with the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution as uh, uh, shown in here. So this is the Maxwell Boltzmann uh, distribution uh, as a function of the uh, molecular speed and the particle and the uh, temperature. You can see the it's very different uh, velocity distribution are shown in here. So good thermostat should be satisfied uh, in, for example, 300 Kelvin should be satisfied with uh, this blue line. And this should be uh, satisfied. All right, so uh, it's, this is the uh, summary of the thermostat and the description. And velocity rescaling is a direct, directly uh, rescaling the velocity as a function of the temperature and previous temperature and uh, each other temperature. And it's just a, a velocity rescaling. So it's, it's very first very first method to the uh, as a thermostat, but it's not good for the uh, MD simulation because uh, it's only consider about uh, this the time and desired temperature and uh, temperature as a function of uh, desired time. So it's not a good way to use the molecular dynamic simulation. So uh, there are another method is uh, this uh, is Anderson method is stochastic collision of atoms in the heat path. So, but it includes the uh, uh, velocity rescaling. So we uh, think about the Anderson method is a uh, little bit uh, developed uh, forms of the velocity rescaling. And Berenice's method is a recoupling between the system and heat pass. But I already told before the node Hoover method is uh, extended uh, Lagrangian approaches. So uh, this is the most widely used in some set in the uh, molecular dynamics simulations. Okay. All right. I'm going to start uh, explain and uh, talking about the yeah, uh, thermal conductivity calculations. So, uh, how to calculate the lattice thermal conductivity by using the molecular dynamic simulations? So, there are two methods in uh, by using molecular dynamic simulations to calculate the lattice thermal conductivity. The first method is the non-equilibrium molecular dynamics, or we call the direct method, because uh, this method is uh, easier uh, with the uh, uh, experimental case. And this is the uh, nano in 2008. Uh, it's very famous uh, figure. But this is, is a suspended method to measure the lattice thermal conductivity by the experimental method. So this is end of here and here is fixed and laser is hitting a uh, middle of the sample and we are uh, measuring the heat uh, flux, peak heat flux or some uh, temperature distribution in here. So finally we can, uh, they can uh, measure the thermal conductivity of this system like a single layer graphene system. But uh, non-equilibrium molecular uh, dynamics is al almost ideal with these kind of things. So this is also a result for the uh, let's see some conductivity by using NEMD calculation. So as you can see here, is very first step of the uh, first time step. The thermal uh, this uh, this area is the bottom of here. It's the hot thermal step, and uh, top of here is cold thermal step. So at uh, as time goes by, the temperature temperature distribution uh, will move to the middle of here. Heat is transferred to the bottom to the uh, top. So after the almost 2,000 uh, uh, picosecond, uh, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 20,000 uh, picosecond, the system will almost uh, uh, reach the time, uh, reach, reach the steady state here. So you can check for the uh, temperature distribution in these figures. So uh, again, for the uh, direct method, it is based on the Fourier laws. 
J is the heat flux, L is the system length, and it's graph T, and this is kappa, it's a retisomal conductivity. So we are going to use this uh, very basic Fourier rule to calculate the thermal conductivity. I'm gonna be saying also, so how to calculate the heat flux in the thermal steady state? So by definition, heat flux is the uh, thermal energy transfer from the uh, unit area to the unit area and unit time. So we can, uh, this is the definition of the heat flux. So in our simulation, how to calculate the cumulative energy here? So cumulative energy is the uh, average of the incorporated energy to the cold summer set and extract from the uh, hot summer set. So we, we're going to be some this quantity and the average is here, and we can calculate the cumulative energy. And then uh, cumulative energy, uh, by definition, is cumulative heat flux is, uh, I already mentioned uh, here, the thermal energy transfer the unit area. This is the unit area here and unit time, this is the unit time. So we can finally get the uh, uh, heat flux in here. So we know the heat flux, and we know the length, and we know the gravity. So we can finally calculate the, we can finally calculate the salt lattice thermal conductivity by using a uh, non-equilibrium molecular dynamics simulations. All right, so what is the advantage of the NEM non-equilibrium molecular dynamics simulations? Uh, comparing with the uh, E of, Equilibrium molecular dynamics simulation. Uh, non equilibrium molecular dynamics can be calculated crystalline and non crystalline materials like uh, amorphous structure or some, something like defective structures. And also calculate the thermal rectifier or some defect. So, this is the advantage of the non equilibrium molecular dynamics simulations. All right. And next is the uh, equilibrium molecular dynamics. We call someone called the green cuba method because it's based on the green cuba formula. So this is the only different thing of the uh, non-equilibrium molecular dynamics. Uh, equilibrium molecular dynamics use just one uh, summer step, but in uh, uh, non-equilibrium molecular dynamics has uh, two summer steps. So that is why we call the non-equilibrium and equilibrium molecular dynamics simulations. Okay. So in here, so calculate the lattice thermal conductive tensor from the heat current autocorrelation function at a finite temperature T. And in by definition in here, this is the autocorrelation function. And uh, by using autocorrelation function, and we can finally calculate the uh, lattice thermal conductive T tensor. So this is the uh, example of the equilibrium molecular dynamic simulation. So actually, so this is I, I mentioned I mentioned here. This is the autocorrelation function. As a function of time, uh, we can decide uh, after uh, something here or here a system is reached the uh, steady state. So after the reaching the steady state in the EMD simulations, so we can calculate the uh, lattice thermal conductivity tensor in here. So it's very good for the uh, good thing like an advantage of the EMD. The so all direction of the lattice thermal conductivity can be obtained by the one-shot calculation. So it just you can uh, only on one calculation you can calculate all direction of the thermal conductivity tensor. So uh, sometimes it's good for the uh, like uh, anisotropic uh, materials or something like this. This is uh, uh, for example uh, anisotropic material should be calculated uh, all directions in the uh, non-equilibrium molecular dynamics, but uh, using the EMD method is, is very good. Uh, all directions that is thermal conductivity can be calculated uh, by uh, just one uh, calculation. So this is advantage of the uh, equilibrium molecular dynamics simulation. But it can it cannot uh, calculate the non-equilibrium uh, like a thermal rectifier or defective system cannot be calculated uh, non-equilibrium uh, molecular dynamics simulation. So uh, sometimes good and sometimes bad. I'm gonna be a uh, summary after uh, page, uh, later page. Okay. So another method is this is the uh, non non uh, molecular dynamics method. This is the Boltzmann transport. Uh, uh, Boltzmann. I want to explain the Boltzmann transport equation. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, definition of the VTE is to find the phonon distribution as a function of out of equilibrium. 
So, uh, so what is our, our equilibrium here? Uh, this is uh, like a uh, uh, system has a uh, temperature gradient or some apply the bias in the system we call the out of equilibrium. So Boltzmann transport equation is uh, defined by so actually uh, this by defined uh, so find the following distribution function at this kind of this this kind of situations. All right. So how to calculate the thermal conductivity by using Boltzmann transport equations? So this uh, by the uh, very uh, very elementary uh, kinetic theory. We can calculate very a lot. Actually, not easy, but uh, just so uh, like uh, this formula is very simple. Uh, we consider uh, all direction, but we consider a uh, three direction x, y, z. So divide by uh, one third. So C alpha is the volumetric uh, heat capacity, and V is the uh, group velocity of phonons, and tau is the relaxation phonon relaxation time. But uh, V times T is a V is a velocity, T is a time. So we can uh, approximate the uh, like formal mean frequency L. So somebody used the uh, uh, CVL integrate here, or somebody uh, used the CV square tau. It's the same, actually, the uh, same formula here. So, uh, but almost a uh, very difficult, most uh, difficult part of the uh, to calculate the uh, Thermal conductivity by using Boltzmann transport equation is the tau. I mentioned the, before the tau is the phonon uh, relaxation time. But phonon relaxation time is the not harmonic properties, so it is very difficult to calculate the uh, uh, calculate or some estimation of tau is very difficult because uh, this is unharmonic properties. It should be calculated by the third order interatomic force constant. But uh, however, the C or V is uh, like a heat capacity or a, a group velocity can be calculated from the second order interatomic force constant. So the major thing is the uh, most important thing is how, how to calculate how is very uh, hard and some time consuming calculation is needed. So all right, this is the Boltzmann transport equations. All right, I want to uh, explore example for the non-equilibrium molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, in this case, is, this is my paper for the latest thermal conductivity of graphene. Uh, I want to briefly a uh, summary of this paper. This is the length dependent latest thermal conductivity of graphene by using a non-equilibrium molecular dynamic simulation with the LEMS code. And uh, we explicitly calculate the bullet to the system, which means the very large system is considered in here. So finally, we can get a leisure for the let's say thermal conductivity value of graphene is uh, 3,200 watts per meter Kelvin at the 16 uh, micrometer at room temperature. So how to calculate this one? Okay. So this is the simulation model in this paper. In this paper. Uh, we consider this is the non-equilibrium molecular dynamic simulation. So this this simulation model is divided by uh, three parts: suspended and thermal step, and a middle of this is the transport region. So after tutorial, we we know about we uh, write the transport length as an input. So this part is the uh, transport length. So and you also this part and this part is the you don't worry about the material care because we already optimized this and this a thermal step ideally so you only uh, write uh, this length over here so and last part of one unit is uh, suspended uh, because of the uh, some reason uh, first one is the uh, if you are not uh, suspended uh, end of here. And the system will be moved uh, artificially. So, and also in the uh, second region of the fixed in area is the <coughs> we are. Uh, this is a direct method. So we are. Uh, we want to describe the uh, like the exper experimental situations. So in the in also experimental situation, this uh, end of shear is fixed. So we want to. Describe that kind of thing. So that is the reason why uh, we are fixed end of uh, simulation model. OK. 
Okay, so in here, so we start from the 2.45 nanometer to the almost 16 micrometers uh, transport length. So we are using Node Hoover. I use the Node Hoover source pad, and width is the width is this this area. We call the width. This is uh, we test for the 4 and 40 unit cell, and length is we are uh, I mentioned previously. And thickness, this is graphing, so we should define the thickness. And we thickness is uh, I, we are getting from the experimental results in 3.35. And number of atoms is this is uh, 15.55 micrometers, almost around uh, 2 million and 2.5 million atoms. So we also use the total potential with optimized parameters. And MD time is uh, 0.5 uh, time to second. All right, this is the result here. So in the non-equilibrium molecular dynamics, uh, there are uh, we should uh, increasing lengths to the system is reaching the uh, like a DPC value of some of the DPC. I'm gonna be explain more details in the tutorial sessions. So we use uh, tens of 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, and up to 64,000 uh, unit cells. So as you can see here, this uh, I mentioned I. I mentioned our uh, previous uh, previous slide. Uh, is, this is a cumulative energy, and the uh, heat flux J can be calculated from the this. This is actually cumulative energy, so we can calculate uh, this uh, like a slope from the here, and the divide by time. And this WH is a cross section area, so we can get a heat flux, and then we should, we can calculate the thermal conductivity. So this blue vertical line is mean, means the time to reach steady state. So as you can see, these figures, uh, as a, a system is uh, bigger, the time to reach steady state is more time. So this is almost a uh, very beginning of time. It's time to reach steady state. But in this is uh, most biggest case in our simulation. So this is it's almost uh, 2,000, uh, 25,000 picosecond is needed to get a uh, rich steady state. So you should uh, uh, be careful about the simulation. So what if uh, you are stuck from the uh, this time, like a uh, four, uh, five, 5,000 picosecond, like uh, in here, for example, yes, you, you cannot get an uh, exact value of the thermal conductivity of this system because the slope in uh, 5,000 is like more bigger than uh, this case, you know, which means uh, the system is not rich the steady state. So you still considering the uh, system is rich the steady state. So it's very important thing. Always simulation time is a time to steady state to be uh, rather than uh, steady state, right? So I want to notice about this one. Always remember, uh, time to simulation is larger than the time to steady state. Time to reach steady state. Okay, don't stop here. Don't stop over here. Don't stop in here. You should calculate more. Okay, this is a very critical part in uh, calculate the uh, latest sum of the Right. This is a result of the uh, graphing case. Uh, this is the uh, uh, first one. Is this is uh, this dash dot line is the bullet remit uh, from the our calculation, and this blue dash to line is the phenomenological high order heat transport equation. Uh, this is like a so plot, plotting in here, and this red cross is the experimental results as the ACS nano and. Uh, volume number five and 321 case in 2011. So it's very good agreement with the uh, experimental case or some uh, theoretical case. And also this is a phenomenological uh, transport equation. So also it's satisfied with that. And this is the uh, dependence of the width, but it's, uh, I, we cannot found the uh, uh, dependency issues. So. Uh, we don't worry about uh, the uh, 40 or more bigger uh, cells, bigger system. So we only can calculate uh, just for four units is enough for to calculate. So finally, uh, I want to uh, write a comparison chart of the uh, 
advantage or some disadvantage of the molecular dynamics or Boltzmann transport equation. So uh, non-equilibrium molecular dynamics is good for very fast, EMD also fast because of classical approach, but uh, Boltzmann transport is a little bit uh, more time, actually not a little bit, uh, huge, huge more times is needed. So in this case, is uh, we can we can calculate the effect or some multiplier or some non crystalline structures, and large scale calculation is can be uh, performed by using non equilibrium because this is also a practical approaches. This is but uh, EMD case is good for the uh, I mentioned previously uh, the thermal conductivity tensor at once, so it's good for the anisotropic system or something like that. However, Boltzmann transport is good for the accurate and diversity and relatively uh, easy to handle the various thermal conductivity and also implement some scattering mechanism. It, this is also a relatively easy to implement the uh, scattering mechanism. However, uh, this, this advantage also exists for the old case. This is the finite size effect is existing. And this is a converting issue about the autocorrelation function. And in both cases, it needed the appropriate force field and relatively low accuracy in this case. However, in Boltzmann transport, as I mentioned, high computational cost is needed. And because of the computational cost, we are limited size. Maybe up to the few thousand atoms is limited. And because of the high computational cost. And only finite temperature could be handled, which means the, uh, in non-equilibrium case, we have a handle of two or two or three more than uh, thermal set can be applied in the system, but uh, Boltzmann transport is only defined by the uh, finite temperature. Okay, so it has the advantage or disadvantage of the molecular dynamics and Boltzmann transport case. Right? Uh, lastly, I want to application of the uh, non-equilibrium case. Sorry. Uh, this is the uh, thermal rectifier. In first case, is the simulation model is same as you can see here, but only differences are in this case are a uh, hot thermal state is located on top of the system, and this. Our okay, case is the Somerset, hot Somerset is, is located at bottom. Okay, but so in this case, heat current is up to down, and in this case, it's bottom to up. But uh, you can see here, this is actually maybe a uh, silicon. Silicon has a uh, like a tri triangular, a uh, triangle uh, effect artificially. So it's very different. The heat is this direction or this direction, so it's different, uh, so it has a uh, different value of thermal conductivity. So we call it, this is a thermal rectifier. All right, and second case is uh, we can considering the, this is a crystalline case, and this is the uh, yeah, isotope, considering the isotope, and this case is amorphous case, and last case is amorphous and uh, isotope effect is considered. So in the non-equilibrium molecular dynamic simulation, we can calculate amorphous or isotope effect uh, directly. Okay. So finally, that, this is actually uh, like, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, we can use the estimation uh, thermal conductivity and by using only the like uh, temperature distribution. And this is, and uh, worst case is the, uh, Maybe silicon, or this is uh, uh, like uh, I'm not sure. This is <laughs> I'm not sure this is which one, but I only know that uh, this is the uh, larger, uh, more higher thermal conductivity than this one, because you can see here this is a summer uh, so heat flow is uh, transported as a function of time, but this is constant, right? Which means uh, the temperature or the heat transport is not occurring in here because it has the lower than this case. But I only know the uh, this is high thermal conductivity than this one because uh, we can uh, find the heat transport is, is occurring in the as a function of the time. Okay, so this is just an estimation: the higher or lower 
but this, we only know the relatively value, but not not a quantitatively value. So this is the estimation case. All right. Uh, it's the finish about the theory. Okay, so it takes a little bit time. So you guys, uh, this is the start from the tutorial session. But uh, you should need some Chrome browser. Okay, it's here. All right. Okay, you can open the, your Chrome browser now. Please open the Chrome browser and write the uh, mathq.com. Okay, you can find it here. So if you have the ID of the material scale, you can uh, uh, sign in. Or somebody don't have the ID, please sign in by Google or Facebook or let it turn here. Okay. If you want to make, you don't want to use the sign up with the Google or Facebook, you can write the email and your name, password, and verify. Agree. Create. Okay. But I already have the ID in the materials care, so I will sign in. All right. I'm waiting for the few minutes because uh, somebody have don't have ID of the materials care. So not four minutes. Just uh, I need uh, ten seconds for the uh, joining materials care. It takes very easy. Please, uh, please write the chatting uh, by using chatting if you have any problem with uh, or like a troubleshooting over here. You can see the uh, chatting windows at the top or so, uh, bottom of the your desktop or some somebody has so, a uh, top of the you can find the chatting windows. All right. Uh, you have any problem uh, or some question in the uh, for the let's say some conductivity calculation or some theory? Please write the uh, uh, your question in the by using the chatting windows. Okay, I will answer. Please uh, give some time to answering your question. Somebody asking for the uh, ensemble is good ensemble is what is what is the good ensemble and what is the good cube of the ensemble? Okay. You can like the chicken video. I have lots of tests in the material scale, so there are many data in here, but you, know, you guys, most of you guys uh, don't have any data from here because you are first very beginner or first time to use the material scale. So you don't worry about this part. All right. So Okay, I start for the uh, calculation. Please click here. Okay, without guide. Uh, or you somebody cannot uh, find uh, this window, you can both work. The same page actually. All right, press this button. Click. All right, you can see the this structure builder is the uh, as a. Uh, uh, our first window in the new work. So today we are uh, calculate the. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, go to the account page, All right? Yeah, but I have only uh, two things. But uh, you guys have some uh, billing, another billing, like uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, sorry. Where is the billing time in here? Just a second, please. Uh, sorry, Dr.
Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, you can find the uh, uh, webinar four in the billing type. Okay, you change. You should change the uh, webinar four. But I don't have a uh, webinar four billing. But uh, you guys have some. Uh, Okay. Oh yeah, in here I found it. So webinar for example, then masculine it should change, All right? Okay, update it. All right, I have fifty dollars. I'm rich. And go to work page in here. Press button in the new work. Okay. You should change the billing system for the credit, right? So press button the preset. Okay, preset button, and you change it to the silicon. All right, click and then generate. Oh, great! This uh, is a crystal of silicon is uh, generated in the crystal system. And you can press the simulation in here and lamps. Click. Today we are going to calculate some of the right? So press the this button. Click. And connecting modules. So if you want to uh, connect with this crystal structure, press button here. All right? In here. It's the uh, uh, right side and top, right top. You, you click here. So if you are uh, successfully connected with the uh, crystal builder and lamps, it, this is black, almost black, black and green portion is showing in here. This means the successfully uh, connected with the crystal builder and thermal conductivity modules. All right, so there are many potentials uh, exist in here, but if you can use any potential in the in here, well, I'm gonna start. MEAM type potential state. But if you want to toss up or toss up or modify C, can be used if you want. But today I'm gonna using uh, MEAM potential. And I start from the, this is a super cell. This is a unit cell, all right? We are going to expand 100 this direction and two by two as a, a cross section, okay? So, I want to calculate the transport region as a 50. So, which means the transport length and x, this yellow region of length, is going to be 50 unit cells. So, how to know the uh, length of here? This is the uh, information of the, your system. Uh, this is the uh, ABC, this is lattice parameter, it's a 5.43 times 50 will be uh, your length of system, okay? So, I want trans if you want to transport another direction, you can change, like here, that's here, like this, okay? What I want today, just this is the iso isotropic system, so you don't care about this x, y, z direction, but you should know that, uh, for example, graphene or some molybdenum disulfide or some like a layered system or some anisotropic structure, on isotopic uh, system, like a uh, certain uh, another system, it should be uh, care about uh, this direction and this direction and this direction because anisotropic means different value can be calculated at the, as a function of directions. Okay, so change it to 50. And uh, today I want to 300 Kelvin temperature and time is simulation time is uh, 500 picosecond. And time step is 0 0.5 time to second, okay? So time divide, uh, you, sh you should know that you can know about the how many steps of calculation in here. Uh, 500 picosecond divided by the 0 0.5 time to second. It's gonna be total time, total uh, steps to calculate the molecular dynamic simulations, okay? And then on demand, uh, 48, 48 nodes, in jump name, level L, 0, P, and zero two and zero three, okay? So which means the uh, uh, 50 units, uh, two units, two units, okay? I'm gonna copy for later. And start job. 
Good. Done. You just waiting for the finishing the job. Okay. But I want to calculate more things. This is 50, all right? I'm going to add one more. Lamps. Click the lamps button here. And then thermal conductivity. Connect with the structure builder. Okay. The same is up. But in this time, I'm going to change the super fill length. Okay. This is 50. I already submitted. Uh, this is 100, all right? So we don't change anything. Just change it here. That's the 100. Okay, start job. Uh, good. All right, this is finished. And one more thing. I'm going to click connection. Uh, this time, I'm going to be changing 200. Okay. Another thing, other thing is all the, all the things. So the name is going to be 200. All right. Press button start. All right. Good. So I submitted three jobs. In first case, I'm going to change the name as a 50 by 2 by 2. Okay. And second case is uh, 100 by 2 by 2. Okay. And third case is 200. All right, 200 by 2 by 2. So I uh, submit three jobs. So you can also check here. All right, one, two, three. But uh, now status is a uh, prepare, okay? So I'm waiting for a few minutes. It's going to be changed to running. All right, so, all right, so. Job, uh, this message is job is running, all right? So this is your job number, and this is running, so it's not finished. So if you update the status, click here, it's gonna be changed when, when you finish the job, this is green windows, it has been changed, and this is also job is finished like something. Update status, update status, right? But this is not finished yet, so this message is gonna be not changing yet. All right. So, okay, I'm waiting for the uh, uh, job finish it. And, okay. Oh. All right, uh, this content will be provided as a PDF file after finishing the, uh, our, this webinar. And also this video will be uploaded as on the YouTube or some other pages, so you don't worry about uh, that. Also, okay. Is that something? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, uh, if you, ha I'm gonna be answer about some questions for you guys. If you have any questions, please write the chatting ch chatting windows. Uh, first uh, question is the So first question, how to decide the ensemble is good for your system, okay? So I uh, I mentioned before in the presentations, for good good ensemble is uh, satisfied with the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Uh, you can calculate, uh, if you want to check the, this ensemble is good or not, 
you calculate the velocity of the your system and uh, plot your velocity, all atoms is velocity, you should be satisfied and then uh, plot the uh, uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and then matching with the Boltzmann distribution and your velocity, it should be almost the same, right? Maxwell Boltzmann. Distribution, right? This is the only way to the uh, how to decide a uh, uh, good anything or not, all right? So, second case are green cube formula. Actually, uh, yeah, uh, green cube formula that for the sample interval. Right, this is your question, right? Uh, right. Sam we have sample sample interval is the same like in the uh, molecular dynamics simulation is equal to time step. Right. So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, this is very uh, important question for the all the uh, molecular dynamics simulation. So. Uh, sample interval is the uh, uh, same, it is the same the time step in the molecular simulation, but uh, some cases uh, you have the, your system is changed very drastically in a very short time, so you should uh, set time step more shorter than a uh, normal case, okay? But it, it, it also time consuming, right? So it's approach, approach is the very uh, important thing, so how to decide the time step is very important, all right? So, for example, this time change very fast. Reduce. Okay. But reduce. Okay. So, what is the third questions? All right. Oh, it's very good questions. All right, I will take this one. How could you examine the system at the steady steady state? All right. First, okay. Check. Temperature, temperature distribution, oh, sorry, evolution of PC, PM, PH. Okay, this is called. And this is hot area. Okay. And second is check oh, humidity. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So you should check one and two, one plus two. One and two. Should be very five is one plus one and two. Very interesting. Another one. 
So uh, I I'm gonna be uh, answering the finish the calculation because we are we are providing analyzing the results. So you can check the temperature evolution and the cumulative energy as an analyzer tab. Okay. So I'm gonna be uh, mentioned later. Okay. One more time. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, someone asking for the uh, change in how to decide the final result. Uh, I will show you. Just wait a second, please. Someone asking for the how to decide the final result, okay? So I'm going to show you uh, a little bit later after finish the calculation or uh, here, okay? So do you have any question? For more questions, if you don't have any questions, I'm gonna be uh, check for the legit, okay? All right. So again, so okay, it's not finished yet. Checking for that. Update. No, not finished. So I will check for the data session here. Uh, if you want to load data to calculation, so you can go to the, press this button, okay? This button, press, and you can see this on thing. And press here, okay? Uh, there are many files. This is initialized. This is input files or log or some main calculation and some structure files to calculation and something like that. If you want to check for low data, you can uh, download this file, okay? Like press this button, download. All right, but it's not finished yet, so I already calculated previously, okay? Okay, so when you job finishes uh, successfully, you can find uh, these green windows, okay? This is the 50, exactly same, EAM, NEAM potential with the 50 by 2 by 2, 300 Kelvin, or 500 picosecond, time step is 0 0.5 femtoseconds, and the result is showing here, okay? So I mentioned uh, just previously, uh, this is, you should, we should check for the temperature distribution, okay? So lead is the hot thermostat region. So I set up the we set up the hot thermostat as a 330 Kelvin. So it's a very good. Uh, it's a uh, temperature evolution is very good formed is uh, near the 330 Kelvin. And this is the transport region. I want to calculate the 300 Kelvin. So uh, this is the fluctuate near the 300 Kelvin. And this blue uh, line, blue solid line is the cold summer set. And this is the 300 Kelvin minus 30 Kelvin is a 270. So it's also a blockchain near the 270 Kelvin. So it's good, yeah. So uh, well done with calculation. Uh, next case is heat flux. I uh, apply the X direction as a, a uh, summer set, uh, sorry, a uh, transport direction. So red is the transport direction. So it looks like let's go up and down, up and down, up and down, right? So I'm gonna check the uh, well uh, system is the uh, uh, well established the heat flux in the system. You can check this here. But another case like another on uh, isotropic uh, system will be very different from the, this kind of thing. So most important thing is the community energy case, okay? So material scale provide the automatically fitting the best results of the uh, thermal conductivity calculation. So this red line is automatically calculate linear uh, regression is performed uh, is the many points. So this is the best point in uh, like uh, in uh, we provide uh, in the material scale. But 
if you want to change the slope or some like a, a interception, this is interception is zero point almost zero point eight. So if you change the slope, you can change it up like one, two. Okay, all right, it's going to be changing. All right, so two, one. Okay, all right, so zero eight. Oh. All right, and change it intercept. But if you want to not go for the result and some of them, it cannot be a non value, right? So you can check that this value. But if you want to fine tuning of the our result, you can uh, change the like slope and intercept function. Okay. So in this case, this is this length, this then transport heat transport length is uh, uh, 50 nanometers, and uh, 22.67 uh, watts per meter Kelvin. So I write the uh, this, this, and this, right? Go to the next case. This is the uh, 100. Only change the supercell, like supercell, uh, number of supercell. So analyze results. It's almost same, but its fluctuation is a little bit uh, uh, different from the previous case because it, it, it has more atoms than the uh, these cases, so okay, you only check the semiconductive value and length. Okay, I write the length and semiconductive value in here. Okay, those cases are uh, all the same. Okay, it's more uh, the fluctuation more uh, smaller than the previous case because uh, this is more atoms than this case or this case. Okay. So in this case, this is just a length is uh, here, and some of the value here. So I write the uh, I wrote the length and some of the value here. Okay, it's the same. So if we want to plot the uh, if we want to calculate the um, phonon mean prepass, I show you how to calculate the phonon mean prepass and uh, diffusive value of the sum of the Okay, if you think so. Fitting tool is press button analy analyzer and cover fitting tool. Okay. And today, uh, you can write uh, any value in here. If you want to uh, linear regression, you can press one, two, three for a something value and then uh, press fit button. It's the result I show in here. I show you. Fit. Yeah, good. This is the A and two B value are showing. You can uh, use the like origin or some other tools instead of uh, origin or some uh, some other fitting tool. Uh, in the material scale, we provide a color fitting tool. So if you want to use uh, this kind of thing, you can easily uh, like uh, press analyzer and color fitting tool. Okay. But uh, I'm not gonna be use color fitting for the linear regression. Or that you want. Oh, I gonna be say uh, equation. I want to show the one equation over here. Sorry, I cannot find the equation. So, write the cost term and number of coefficients two. And equation is a times x divided by b plus x. In here, actually, uh, there is no pen here. A is the theoretical limit of the system. What can you handle?
Okay, remember this. So the equation will be this one, okay? Y equal x divided by b plus x All right here. And then the value are right in here. 49.96 Okay you write uh, here and then fit. All right, that's great. So I mentioned A is the theoretical limit of resistive thermal conductivity. So A is here, so 165, and B is the mode independent phonon mean prepass. So you can result in here. So finally, you can get silicon case. Theoretical arrow equal 165.34 Kelvin. Okay, and mean prepass is approximate 300, uh, 278.9 nanometer. Okay, so actually, uh, this mean prepass is the uh, most independent for the mean prepass. So, so I, I I want to uh, express this uh, approximate value. Okay, and this value is usually our uh, experimental case is uh, 150. All right, in the uh, experimental case, so uh, it's quite uh, good uh, matching with the experimental case. All right. Yeah, uh, this is uh, some uh, right, experimental value of the uh, crystalline silicon. This is crystalline silicon, but this is uh, isotopic, just uh, consider it 28. So natural crystal silicon has the uh, uh, 150. So it's good to make agreement, agree with uh, our calculation result, okay? All right, it's almost finished. So I want to... Uh, about the second follow me contest. Uh, thank you for the first follow me contest. Uh, so many people are participated the uh, first follow me contest uh, in the uh, phonon calculations. But uh, second follow me contest is the uh, uh, this calculation, let's see some of the calculations. So please uh, follow me on uh, my calculation and then unload the uh, in the open research page. Our uh, first prize will be 500. Uh, Dollar, but in the material care credit, and second is 200, or third price is 100. Okay, this is randomly selected, so please uh, participate in the follow me contest. All right, and uh, I'm wrote uh, this open research here. All right, thank you so much. All right, so today is i gonna be I prepared the materials will finish it, and if you have any questions in here. Uh, okay, one question. Okay, somebody asking for the payment. Okay. Oh, uh, this is free, okay? You only pay for the calculation.
¿Qué? Other thing. Other thing. Ah, okay. Good. Yeah, pre. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. So, how uh, can we give the credit to the little bit of literature potential? Can you please explain for us? Uh, the conclusion is to explain for the uh, green cube method, but actually, uh, green cube method is a little bit uh, difficult and some. It takes a very long time to explain for that. So I'll make some uh, presentation, and then after that, after finish the presentation, after finish the webinar, I upload the green cube method in details, okay? All right, and another questions? Oh, yeah, it's very important thing. Reliability, all right? Actually, uh, classical molecular dynamics is almost uh, most part of classical uh, molecular dynamics is uh, depending on the force fields. Okay, so some can so uh, there are many potential types of the or lamps, for example, lamps. But uh, some potential is developed uh, for the thermal conductivity, and some cases developed for the stress strain curve. And in some cases are uh, uh, developing for the uh, reactive phase or something like reactive for the atom or some molecule. So uh, uh, I cannot uh, answering for the this question because uh, it's depending on the system or it's depending on the type of calculations or something like that. So yeah, uh, sorry for the cre uh, credit uh, like uh, reliability. That's for it's de it depending on the depends on system or type of calculation, etc. Okay, so it's very hard to uh, answering the uh, question. Okay, all right. So another thing, are you guessing? Oh. If you have more questions, please uh, contact the uh, materials care and please send me some email for the uh, question for that. All right. Okay. Thank you for today. Oh, it takes very long time. Actually, it's a one one and fifteen minutes, one hour and fifteen minutes. It's very long time for. Thank you for joining uh, our uh, first webinar. And I'm gonna see you next month or next time, okay? Thank you, see you. Bye bye.